the Master of Ceremonies. If truth was told, Anna Louise asked me, sent me a text message. I didn't reply for a number of weeks. And my <laughs> wife said, have you ever told Anna Louise if you're doing that? And I said, I'm not sure I could do that in front of all those ladies down in first quarter down. And she says, well, I've told her you're doing it. So <laughs> that's why I'm here. I think the reason that Anna Louise asked me to do it was because our household just leads everybody in terms of recycling, looking after the environment. Because every time that I say to my wife, is that new? She says, I've had it for a while. <laughs> and I can never understand why you keep clothes that you've had for a while in beautiful bags in the boot of the car. So we lead the way, maybe it's the same in your household as well. We're here to have, hopefully, a really good evening of fun and fellowship, food and fashion. But there's just a couple of housekeeping rules that I just need to point out to you. In case of a fire, follow the green fire exits, if you would, and make your way as quickly to the nearest exit. There's an exit here and an exit there, and those are probably the best exits to use if there is something untoward that happens. We hope and pray nothing like that happens. There are toilets just like this door to the left, and then if you go round here, toilets just down the corridor as well. There are plenty of stewards about in beautiful high-vis jackets, so if you need to ask anything, then speak to the stewards. Some of this I have been told to say, so you are on a textile train tonight. So you need to get your mind into that mindset. You're on a textile train. You'll be travelling down our corridors, and I've been asked to encourage you to walk on the left-hand side of the corridor to showcase an organisation in our church called Creation Carers. And really what we want to do in the first couple of minutes is just to really set the tone. And the tone is that God has created this beautiful world in which we live. He has created all of us in his image. And yet unfortunately, this world is broken and this world is in need of restoration. And we want to just pray at the start and just to bring God into our consideration and into our evening. So let's have a short prayer about fashion. And we're going to take you on a journey. And so you'll be moving around various carriages around the church building tonight. I've been told I'm the master of ceremonies. In other words, I've been told what to do and what to say. If anything goes wrong, though, it's my fault. But the person that you need to look towards is Anna Louise, who is our station master. So if you stand up, Anna Louise, and give her a round of applause. <laughs> you need one for tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm told that Anna Louise has all the whistles and all the flags that you could possibly need to guide you around this journey through the church building tonight. So as I've said, we're here to showcase an organisation called Creation Carers. And it was established in our church really to encourage us to think about the environment, to accept our responsibilities as stewards of God's creation, and to see what really we can do to make an impact for good on the creation and the environment all around us. And I think that the enthusiasm and the energy of Anna Louise and a few others has led to this group being formed in our church. Sometimes you can see us up and down Watson Street picking up litter. There have been bird boxes that have been put up in Hoy's Meadow. There have been various other initiatives such as planting wild flowers and bulbs and trying to bring a little beauty back into the urban environment in which God has placed us. And of course, there is a biblical basis to what we do because you'll remember that Adam and Eve, our first parents, were placed in a garden and God told them to look after that garden. And as we've said in the first few minutes, 
there has been a problem with our creation. And over in the book of Romans, we learn that the creation is groaning. And we just look at our news and we see that creation is groaning. But as we've already alluded to, Jesus says, I make all things new. And hopefully through this fashion evening, we can see how God brings to life the old, the worn, the torn, and makes something beautiful. So we go on our journey, but we have two special guests to welcome here this evening. First of all, we have Siobhan Purnell in the orange. So a round of applause for Siobhan. So Siobhan is the Tackling Textile Coordinator at Keeping Northern Ireland Beautiful, and we're going to hear from her in a few moments. We also have a familiar face in Angeline Murphy, who is from Marilyn. Round of applause for Angeline. <laughs> and she was a star of the BBC's Great so a Sewing Bee. I do know what that programme is because it's an Instagram post and I now know how to patch jeans. Couldn't use a sewing machine, but I know how she does it. So I've done my sewing research and we're looking forward to hearing from Angeline later on. So in the meantime, we are sitting in the train station and we welcome Siobhan to give us some reading material and visions about fashion and its impact on the environment. You're very welcome. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is slightly daunting. <laughs> you can normally be talking to as many people all at once. But I'm absolutely thrilled to be here and hope everybody can hear me all right. And a big thank you to Valerie. And Valerie phoned me, if you all know Valerie, from here in the church. And just before Christmas, I think it was, to say she had this idea. And boy, what an idea. And to have us all here tonight is just amazing. So I'm going to be on stage for 10 minutes, so if I go longer, you can start moving around and say it's time to get off the train and kind of keep us on, on, on time. So as we uh, kind of introduced me there, I am Siobhan Pennell, and I work for Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful, a local environmental charity. And this evening, we um, have five times more clothes than a granny and granddad ever had. So if you look at your wardrobe, you probably go, I actually don't have any room for anything else, but we still feel inclined to go out and buy more. Hopefully tonight we'll make you think about that. Um, and on the flip side of all this buying is we have a lot of waste and we're throwing away a million tons of textiles every single oh, no, Perfect timing. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Right, my God. <laughs> So now we're going to move on to our TV star, Angeline <laughs> um, Murphy, and Angeline is going to talk to us a little bit about her experience on the sewing bee, and then her talk is entitled Reuse, Repair, Reimagine. Thanks. Thank you very much, Graham. Hopefully my presentation will work. Great. Okay, just need to keep on time. Jump up on stage. Sorry, I'm sniffing. I um, I've come down with the cold, so at one point today I didn't think I would maybe make it. So, go easy on me this evening. Um, I move some of these things. Thank you very much for the lovely introduction, Graham. I'm Angelina Murphy. I'm just from out the road. I'm in Maharlin, originally from Addy Call in County Down. Here's my number one fan here this evening, my mother, um, and. I'd just like to say I'm absolutely honoured to be here this evening and the opportunity to speak in front of so many people. I really do love what I do. I'm very passionate about sewing. I'm very passionate about teaching the skill and keeping it alive. Um, and I think it's very important. OK, so I'm going to get everyone to stand up, OK? Everyone stand up. Um, and I want you to remain standing if you are happy in the clothes and the conditions in which they were made. So remain standing if you're happy with the clothes that you're wearing and you know where they came from and you know who made them. Okay. Great. Good. 
and everyone's wearing clothes this evening which is good so congratulations to everyone who's remained standing you are happy with the clothes that you're in that's great thank you very much that's a bit of a wee, a wee teaser one that makes you think about well do I know where my clothes were made? Do I know where I picked them up and who made them and where they came from? And exactly what Siobhan said, what is in your clothes as well? But it, we, it's not the way it always was. We used to love our clothes. We used to be proud of them. We used to know who made them. And we'd be supporting local in our community. Northern Ireland used to be littered with, and littered in a good way, littered with keep Northern Ireland beautiful, littered in a good way with tailors and dressmakers and linen mills. And all of a sudden, that was switched up. Um, it became, at one point, it created a massive industry for people. It created great work for the local communities. But when the world became smaller, it started to become industrialized and globalized as well. So all of our production went to foreign countries like China, Bangladesh, Hong Kong. And we've seen less and less of where our clothes were made. So this is the way um, a slide that I have prepared. And you can see that the faster our clothes are made, the lower the price goes and the lower the quality goes. I was in my mother-in-law's house a couple of weekends ago, and it's great because she kept all the magazines from the 80s and 90s, right? And I love scanning through these magazines. They're great. At the front of it, it says, two free dress patterns, sexy for you and pretty for her. I don't know if you'd be allowed to say that anymore in a magazine, but. It was interesting, I was scanning through, and I saw that a spool of thread was 21p, okay? And a pair of trousers was 25. Now, if I'm right in saying a spool of thread would be about five pound now, five, six, seven pound, and a pair of trousers, when I typed it into Google, pair of trousers, first pair that come up, 9.99 from Shane, okay? So in what world is that right, that a spool of thread is maybe 3,000% more expensive, and the pair of trousers has dropped in price. There's something not right there. So we're not encouraged anymore to be making our own things. It's a lot more expensive now. So there's a need, there needs to be a mind shift in the purpose of why we're sewing, why we're creating clothes. It's not because it's cheaper. People think I'm insane because I make my own clothes. Think, oh, it must be, you know, it's cheaper. You can, you can make your own things. But it's absolutely not, it's a lot more expensive, it takes a lot of time. But what there is, is there satisfaction from it, and that's massive. So the price of cheap fashion. Clothing is so, um, it is so cheap now that it's not even worth recycling it. But, it, it. but in a way that you want to be recycling it. But the thing is, people throw it away. By the time that I've delivered this presentation in 20 minutes, there'll be a million kilo of textiles will have been sent to landfill. It's constantly happening, more clothes, more clothes. And half of them textiles, as Siobhan mentioned, will be plastic. So we're all wearing a lot of plastic these days, which is not probably good for us either. So I'll get on just to talk in a wee bit about myself and why I am so passionate about sewing and, and sustainability. I, um, I suppose I was brought up in the country and things were not on our doorstep. If you wanted to go to the shop, you had to either walk or get in the car and go. Um, I wore my brother's clothes that were passed down. You made, you made do. So everything was a wee bit harder, but not anymore. Things are a lot easier. And in my day job, I work in marketing, and we talk about removing the friction to purchase. So that things now are a lot quicker. They want you to just tap, tap, Apple Pay, and you bought your pair of shoes, your pair of trousers, and Amazon delivers them the next day. It all plays with your mind. They want you to buy more and more and more because the shareholder wants more money. Back in the days when we had shops down the street, you were supporting local. It was a local tailor. You were supporting the local family. You were putting shoes on his kids. But now you're just paying the shareholder. And I think it's very important that when we are buying from massive chains, that that's, it's not staying within the economy. It's going out. So a little bit more about me. Um, I am wife to Fergal, who also sews. I am mother of three kids, uh, Luke seven, Owen's four, and Sophia is now two. As I mentioned, my day job, I work in marketing. 
um, a sustainable, I'm a sustainable sewing and craft content creator. So if you are on Instagram or Facebook, please do follow me. I was on the Great British Sewing Bee in series four. Um, I'm an entrepreneur as well. I have my own business on the side. I do a lot of talking um, spots. I do teaching as well and a lot of workshops. I am a Janome brand ambassador. So the sewing machine that I use here, I work with the brand to promote that and to encourage more people to sew. Um, I have been on RTE uh, Today show, showing people how to show, uh, show people how to sew uh, across Ireland as well. And I work with a dye cotton brand. So I'm very much, I do love, I do love crafting. So where it all began, people say to me, oh, well, how did you start sewing? Was it, in, was it in the family? And truth be told, I wasn't brought up in a house that sewing would be around me because if you think back to the time when, when my mummy was, was young, it was sort of when um, women were liberated. You know, there was supermarkets. There was, the clothes could be bought, not... So it was great. You know, women had time to do other things. You know, they don't have to, they don't have to um, make, bake everything, make everything. You know, it, it, was, it was more... They had more time to do other things. So I only found sewing when I went to university, and I'm not blessed with height, so I had to turn up all my trousers. And with turning up trousers, it's quite expensive, and when you're a student, you don't have that much money. So it was something like six or seven pounds to turn up a pair of trousers. I thought, I could give this a go. I got a sewing machine on Christmas Day, my brother bought it for me, and I spent the day trying to thread it, because I don't read instructions. <laughs> so when people say to me, I can't even thread a machine, I'm like, don't worry. That's where I started about 15 years ago. I couldn't try the sewing machine either. I spent the whole day, instruction manual sitting there in the, in the plastic. I said, no, I'll not, I'll not read that. I'll, I'll do it myself. Um, so yeah, and then it was very much trial and error. And I would get a lot of people coming to my sewing classes now and they're very much, they're, they're scared and they don't want to touch the machine. And there's an interesting dynamic of teaching kids and teaching adults. Kids get in, they just do it. They have so much creativity, they don't worry about breaking the needle. Whereas adults, we're just a wee bit more cautious. So if I would say something, I would say, give it a go, don't be afraid. We all make mistakes, constantly we all make mistakes, and it's the only way we learn. And sometimes what we do with a lot of different crafts, or if we, we want to go and tackle something, is we try it once, it doesn't work out, and we put it in the corner. And we move on to something else. It doesn't work out either, so put it in the corner. Now, if you had have done that at least four times, you would perfect at that. So stick at it. If you really are interested in learning to sew, stick at it. Everyone in this room, I'd say after a couple of lessons, I would have you whizzing up different things. It is surprising how quickly you can learn and, and share your talent with other people as well. So this is some of my early projects. Um, this is one here, actually, the hem's fallen off, but I think it's about 15 years old too. But when I started out sewing, I didn't buy new fabrics. I was very much about, again, naturally just being very sustainable. And I think that you just make do and mend. It was just sort of in me. So this is actually a bed sheet. Um, I bought the charity shop in Coleraine, I remember. So you know the wee valance that goes along the bottom of a bed? Um, I had used that for that. And this is like IKEA curtain fabric that was sitting in the corner. Now it wasn't fabric that you would always use for sewing, but I gave it a go because I was only practicing. And I got dressed up and wore it to a wedding. And people were like, oh, I love, I love your dress. And you're like, I'm wearing a bed sheet, you know? <laughs> Thanks. And um, I made skirts. Um, Fergal still laughs to this day. I made him a set of curtains for his university bedroom out of a bed sheet as well and had this nice wee ribbon along it. And he put them up and one was shorter than the other. And I said, your, your wall's offline, definitely. It's, just, <laughs> something, it's not my curtains. But I always say, you need to look back um, to, see, to move forward and see actually what is the history of sewing and where did it all begin? So we look here and yeah, women, women were liberated in the 50s and really made clothes and supermarkets came about. So we didn't have to do it anymore. Women fought for equality for a long time. So along with burning their bras, they actually burned their needles and yarn because it was a statement. I'm not going to be in the house anymore sewing. I'm going to be out with the rest of them and throwing the bras around them and throwing out. <laughs> so for centuries, you know, their contribution, women's contribution to sustainability was really downplayed. 
You know, it was a real soft skill. How you're at home, even the pictures back in the days, the women are sitting with their wee lovely sewing machines. The men were out the hard, you know, they were grinding, whereas the women weren't. So, you know, the, the, the thought process of, what, of women sewing, it was a wee bit softer, a wee bit, you know, oh, you do a wee bit of sewing. But actually, um, you know, clothes and how you can make them bespoke is something, you know, we can talk through our clothes. I always say your clothes is your final layer, okay? And it really is. And unconsciously, we, when someone walks into a room, we look at what colour they're wearing, or we look at, at how they're wearing it, and how, you know, and make a judgment. Not, not intentionally, but it's just natural. It's just a natural instinct for us. You know, if we look throughout the years, you know, we have in behind here, I don't know if this will work, you know, this is a quilt that is created to this day. It's an AIDS memorial quilt begun in 1985, and there's now 48,000 panels on it. And we all know these memory quilts that we've made and, and brought together as a community. They're beautiful, they're a piece of art. You now we have women here, they, they did a silent protest, the Mothers of Plaza, um, for political, political and geographical reasons. They, they created this, um, they had a, a headscarf on them and they had stitched in their, their, their children's names that had disappeared. And it was silent protest, but because of their clothes, they were able to express themselves. And then finally, we have the designer there, um, shaking hands with Margaret Thatcher in 1984 with a t-shirt saying 58% don't want Pershing. And that's an anti-nuclear statement. And that, that t-shirt actually became very popular. And I think that's the thing. We can speak through our clothes, and clothes has always been a way of making a statement. Some sewing celebrities that people actually don't know about. Um, we have their Beyonce. And actually, Beyonce, I'm going to get this right now. Um, at the CFDA Awards, Beyonce stands up when she got this Fashion Icon Award. And she says, I want to thank my granny and my mother. Because when I came into the sewing, when the sewing industry, the music industry, they wouldn't dress me because I wasn't the right colour. I wasn't from the right location. And she goes, my mother was like, don't you listen to them. I'm going to make your clothes for you. And Beyonce's mummy actually made her wedding dress. And she made a lot of dresses that she would go to these big awards in because she then felt that she could dress because she could make her own clothes. And that's actually very much how I feel because I started sewing dresses to go to weddings. And I knew nobody would turn up in what I was wearing. I, you know, and it was, it was such, it is an empowering feeling that you can go to something and not worry about, oh, what I'm wearing, what I'm wearing. I never worry about what I'm wearing because I make it. I create it, especially very much um, weddings and special occasions. And I never worry about wearing something over and over again. I was at an, a, an event last night, actually, in Edinburgh, and it was, a, it was a dinner. And I have wore this dress, I'd say, 10 times. And I just pull it out all the time. And I feel so comfortable in it. I feel so glamorous in it. And I'd say three people stopped me and said, I love your dress. And I was like, thanks, I made it. And there's nothing more important than you turn around going, I made it. And then they go, and they want this whole discussion on how you make it. But um, you can't help but say that. So Beyonce has sewn in her history. Jerry Halloway, and I don't know if any of you know this um, fair play, but Jerry Halloway's, you know this iconic dress that she, she had, uh, she created the flag. She actually made that herself at the start. They were putting her in this very um, designer dress. She took two tea towels because she heard that cutting up a flag, you're not meant to do that, it's bad luck. So she found two flag um, uh, tea towels and got her sister and her stitched them together and took it and said, this is something what I want to wear. And they were like, right, okay, that's, that's incredible. Um, one of my favourites actually is, yeah, Jerry Halloway. She actually has a YouTube sewing, a couple of sewing videos on YouTube. She still sews to this day. So it's really interesting if you want to check her out. Um, I do think that me and her will have a wee sewing session someday. I go over to Monaco, you know, and uh, sew with her and her husband. Now, uh, Danny Minogue as well. So she used to always get Kylie's hand-me-downs. She, she wanted to add a wee bit of her own personality to them. So she would have wore her clothes. We have George Clooney there. He's a bit of a tailor whiz. His, apparently his, um, his wife's zip broke at a very fancy gala dinner. And he was like, oh, no bother, I can fix that. He took her to the toilet. How do we find himself a stitch and stitch the zip back in? 
And then uh, Julia Roberts as well, she very much talks about taking soul in classes. So these people in the limelight and in, in public face and understand the importance of being a wee bit different, having your own personality, whereas fast fashion doesn't give us that anymore. We're all sort of wearing the same. We're all told that this is in trend now. This is what you should be wearing. Forget that. This is now what, what's in trend. So just be conscious, and Siobhan talks about that, just be conscious of the marketing message that you're, you're being given and constantly being given. There's no such thing as trends, and we all know this. You know the line, oh, I kept that in my cupboard because it always com comes around again. Bell bottoms are back in again. I'd say I'm, what, 38, and they've been in maybe three times now. They keep coming round and round and round. So don't throw your clothes out because your kids will probably want them. Do you know, that's, it's sort of thinking, giving your clothes that longevity. So yeah, I just, we must emphasize the importance of value and honoring the textile skill. And I think that's vitally important. I'm not sure if we understand how important this skill is and appreciate it for generations to come. I don't, what's time like? I have a few more slides to go. Are we okay? okay. Yeah. So people were asked, you know, why do you sew? And it's mostly down to personal fulfillment. Because there's no need anymore to sew, People want to do it. So it's very much down to doing it for yourself. Turning up a pair of jeans because you can do it yourself. Mending a, 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 you know, mending a hole in a jumper because you can do it yourself. Feel proud of it. Be proud of it. Big thing I want to talk about as well is men sew too. And my husband, he's actually taken a sewing class for boys. Um, and this is him teaching uh, sewing as well to this wee young chap here. And I think it's important too because women's very much, or sewing's very much seen as something that women do. But really and truly for us to be sustainable, we need the men on board as well. We need them to be men in their clothes too, as well of us, because we're all busy now. It's not that the women sit at home and do all the sewing. Men have to come on board with this as well. And I think it's very important. Fergal's an engineer by trade, and actually Patrick Grant, one of the judges in the sewing bee, he was an engineer by trade, and they call themselves the engineers of the cloth. So this is actually my son sewing. He's four here. I don't know if there's any sound. <laughs> and I just think it's incredible the way he could lift it up, turn the corner, and he's only four. Um, so yeah, a couple of things that we've upcycled in the past. I'm gonna go whiz through a couple of wee videos here just to give you a wee bit of this for inspiration. Uh, upcycling. This is again, look on the sewing machine. It's going the wrong way. So he stops and the lines up again. Oh. <laughs> So just one, I'm actually gonna go through, far through a quick wee videos here. Some people come to me with inspiration. It's not always, it's not always me that's pushing it out. Most of the time actually people come to me and say, do you think you could do anything with this? This lady came to me, she's from Ireland, and she bought her dress pre-COVID. And this happened a lot, because people had bought clothes before COVID, weddings were put off, and then they wanted something completely different afterwards because the trend changed. So she came to me and says, could you take this cover off and create something new in the lace. So we were able to do that. So it's just about rethinking about, I say, look for potential and not problems. So that's what this lady had done. Uh, the next one here is just adding a, a bow to the jumpsuit. So these are wee videos that I put up on Instagram just to sort of inspire people. So I bought that jumpsuit, it's a Reese jumpsuit, I bought it for a fiver on, on Vintage, you talk about online. I would say if you're looking for something and specific, Vintage's great because it's nearly like a, a search. So if you see something in the shop that you want, just go to Vintage and search for it, it's probably there because there is enough clothes in the world. Somebody is selling it on there. So I just went on to check for, um, the jumpsuit. Another wee tip that I normally do is I normally search for, search for broken zip race or broken zip 
some very expensive because they're always selling it. And because people actually don't know the value in it or how cheap it is to repair, um, then you get some real good bargains on there as well. This is just... So just thinking about different, adding different pieces to maybe something that's quite unique or something that's maybe a bit long in your wardrobe, think about adding something. So this was a wedding dress um, that was bought um, in, you know, where you can get samples. So not bought, um, like specifically made. And then I was able to alter it. So a lot of people would think, oh, I can't, it's too big. But things can be altered. And when you have that vision, you can change it up. Next thing I'm going to show you is actually this denim dress. That's made of two of my daddy's pairs of jeans that were, were done the end of life for him. I says, give me them. Don't be throwing them out. I'll take them and turn it into this dungaree dress. Um, so this is this just a wee quick video of this up cycle. Um, I would use quite a few patterns as well. It's just actually about rethinking textiles. It's about rethinking, well that's not a pair of jeans, I can make that into something else. Or that's just not a pair of curtains, I can make that into something else. The next one here we have a very quick kids up cycle. So kids always have holes in their jeans. This is just a wee cute wee idea here to, to change it up. And Owen, he loves wearing them. It's just adding a wee bit of fun element. Um, this is, the next one is a jumper of mine, but I was sort of, like I had, I had worn it enough. So I turned it into a wee dress for my, for my little girl. <laughs> so yeah, so I had turned that into a wee dress and actually I had the arms left over and I turned them into like wee shorts for Owen. I just put a waistband on them. So yeah, I used up all of that fabric. Um, next thing here is, um, I've done a couple of these in the past, is turning wedding dresses into christening gowns. Which is quite good. Actually, that's, a, that's my mummy's wedding dress. Um, my three kids got christened in the, the, my mummy's wedding dress. I made that, and it's now an Ireland piece, which is beautiful, because clothes just sit, but clothes have an emotional attachment, and it's nice to pass them on. That's just upcycled coffee bags. Um, myself and my husband did a wee bit of a challenge. We took this one leather jacket, and we decided, right, you make something, and I make something. So out of that leather jacket, he created a footstool, um, covered footstool and I made the top. Uh, memory bars, I know Rebecca has some memory bars over here this evening, so a lovely way of sort of upcycling uh, either children's clothes or somebody that's passed away clothes, then this is a lovely idea and it's just keeping it at the forefront and it's just it's so lovely to reuse. I don't know if I have much more time actually, no, cut. So anyway, part two um, some other time, but uh, Thank you very much. I hope that was interesting. I could talk all evening. I think uh, the ladies knew that anyway. At 20 minutes is always going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, but thank you very much. And we're about later on if you have any questions. So thank you. <laughs> hey, I. Yeah, it was lovely. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh